Happy Friday. It's time to play some games, forget about school, and pray that your boss doesn't call you into work this weekend. Now, to those of you that were here last week, happy to have you back. And to all those fresh faces, welcome to the channel. Now, let's start the show. This week on The Game Show, we have the latest industry news. Our devs battle it out in the Game Show Game Show, and we have a chat with the team over at Insomniac Games. Hi, I'm Frank, and we're back with another week of industry news. First up in Xbox news, a new home update for some users has changed the UI. Now this is just in beta mode at the moment, but it will eventually roll out to all Xbox owners. On top of that, Xbox has also launched Quest, which has you performing certain actions in many games to earn Microsoft points. Next up in PlayStation news, Naughty Dog has announced that The Last of Us 2 will be the first title of theirs with nudity and sexual content, as if you weren't excited enough already. And PlayStation has launched the PlayStation 5 website. Now, you can just kind of go on there and put in the information to get more information, which I definitely did right away, but this is a definite sign that we're going to see more information soon, and I personally cannot wait. And in Nintendo news, as if you didn't have enough Switches already, Animal Crossing will be releasing with a special Nintendo Switch 2, and now this one does look awesome. I personally never played the Animal Crossing series, but I have heard amazing things, and the Switch is pretty cute. And in other Switch news, Outer Worlds will be landing on March 6th. Now, this title did win a lot of awards last year, and I personally loved it, and I think it's going to be a great fit for the Switch. And finally, the wonderful 101 is getting a remaster. Yes, the Kickstarter campaign went live just the other day and the goals were hit immediately. And finally, a little VR news. Yes, GTA 5 VR seems to be all the craze. At the moment, the mod has been updated and seems to be working great. So if you have a PC and you have GTA 5 and you have a VR headset, get ready for some fun. Link to how to do it is below, courtesy of the wonderful Mr. VR Oasis. And check out this awesome demo that I found on Reddit. Now this is hand tracking with the Oculus Quest. And yes, you guessed it, that's a tech deck right there. Now this brings back so many memories of when I was playing with tech decks as a child. And I cannot wait for a full title just like this. Finally, if you're on an Oculus Quest and we're playing around with hand tracking, now if you're not using your controllers, hand tracking will automatically come on, which is super wonderful. Previously, you had to click a button with your controllers, then move them, hide them real quick. So you get your hands active now boop just move your hands around turn it on diggly doom it's gonna go so what are your thoughts on the news this week please let us know in the comments below welcome to the game show game show the show where devs do get out in a battle to see who is the best at answering video game trivia i'm your host frank let's meet our lovely guest uh, i'm ryan baker i'm an environment artist here at first contact entertainment and i'm hutch the reigning champ all right, let's go over the rules. Like I said, this is video game trivia, so you answer A, B, C, or D. You must wait until all choices have been read before answering, and I must hear an audible eh in order to answer. If you do get the answer correct, you'll gain a point. If not, the answer can be stolen by the opponent. If the opponent steals and answers correctly, they will also steal your point total. The player with the best score at the end of five rounds will be our winner. Everyone understand? Yep. Ready? All right, let's get this started. Who is the most popular American football franchise named after? Is it A, Julio Iglesias, B, Tom Brady, C, Richard 2K, or D, John Madden? John Madden, D. That's the right answer. Good job. These are actual buzzers. Do we have a bad sport? This is baloney. <laughs> Question two, where was Pokemon originally released? Is it A, N64, B, Game Boy Color, C, Game Boy, or D, Super Nintendo? Game Boy Color. Nope. nope. Would you like to steal? Stealing that. Oh no. Eh. Game Boy. That's the right answer, good job. Question number three, what item turns Mario into Big Mario? Is it A, a flower? Is it B, a mushroom? Is it C, a feather, or is it D, a coin? D, mushroom. Nice try, but that's the wrong letter. Would you like to steal? Oh. Yeah. That's silly. 
This game's silly. <laughs> you said it was C, a mushroom? That's the right answer. Good job. This is rigged. It's rigged. Question number four. What is the highest grossing arcade game of all time? Is it A, Pac-Man, B, Time Crisis, C, Star Wars, or D, Donkey Kong? D, Donkey Kong. I'm sorry, but that's the wrong answer. Would you like to steal? Yes, sir. It is A, Pac-Man. That's the right answer. Good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our final question, in the first Halo game, what is the name of the alien race? Is it A, the Revenant, B, the Cinnamon, C, the Covenant, or D, the Assimilants? C, the Covenant. That's the right answer. Good job. One. He still loses. Because I was stealing all the points. Stole all my points. Until champ. next time. Raining, Raining champ. champ. Once again. Do you have anything to tell the studio audience back home? <laughs> no. Some words of inspiration. <laughs> Everybody loves free games, and if you have access to the Epic Store, a PlayStation Plus membership, and games of gold, then February is going to be quite the month for you. Starting off, Xbox Games of Gold users will have access to four great titles this month. First up, in TT Isle of Man, hop on your motorbike and take on the most famous race of all time. Next up, Call of Cthulhu is a role-playing survival horror inspired by the famous H.P. Lovecraft tale. Then, for both 360 and One Owners, grab your blaster and live out those Star Wars fantasies in the original Battlefront, and have some fun in a family-friendly beat-em-up Fable Heroes. Next on our list, PS Plus members will have access to three great titles throughout the month of February. First up, take on the Ultimate Life Simulator in Sims 4. Next, grab your wrench and get ready to sink into the sea and fly above the clouds with the amazing Bioshock collection. Then finally, for all the PSVR owners, hop into the tactical 4v4 multiplayer action with Firewall Zero Hour. Finally, the Epic Store is offering multiple titles and will be revealing more as the month moves on. The first batch, which is available until the 13th, contains two German-style board games, Ticket to Ride, a railway-themed game, and Carcassonne, a tile-based game, like I said, there will be more games added to the Epic Store throughout the month, but if we missed any free games, please let us know in the comments below. Hey, while we're still talking about free games, take a look at this new free-to-play title. Today, we're hopping on Steam to check out Darwin Project, a new battle royale concept from Scavenger Studios. They have a great tutorial to teach you the ropes. There are offline modes versus AI in varying levels of difficulty, and finally, online mode. Rather than a giant closing circle, players start off in different zones that are randomly closed throughout the match. You harvest trees for wood, build equipments, and take out enemies in a battle for first place. Unlike many other Battle Royale games, players can freeze to death, so building fires and warming up plays an important role in survival. When you build these fires or any other equipment, you leave behind a marker that can be inspected by other players and used as a tracker. Although we didn't dive too deep into gameplay, there are various classes and premium options for players looking for more depth. Your main weapon is an axe, and you can also craft arrows for long-range eliminations. I personally used a flying class with a special that had me soaring up over the battlefield, but you can unlock more specials over time that can be swapped out before the start of a match. With over 13,000 reviews and a very positive rating on Steam, I look forward to watching Darwin Project grow and evolve. Nine players remaining. So, what do you think? And if you've had a chance to check out the Darwin Project, let us know in the comments below. When I hear the name Insomniac Games, I immediately think of high quality. Stormlands is no different. From the fluid traversal to the fantastic combat, this game is chocked full of wonderful VR interactions. So of course, I jumped at the chance to interview Mike Daly, the lead designer. Now, without any further ado, Mike, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about getting around in the Stormlands. With each sort of like new traversal revelation, we had to look back on what we thought we'd figured out as far as exploration and combat and throw it all out and, and figure it all out again. And so we had to make a lot of new discoveries about how to arrange the space to make it interesting to traverse around when you can climb on the side of any surface or underneath any surface. Yeah, there were multiple times that I was just in awe of the traversal system and I never got lost. Mike, you mind telling everybody about that awesome map? The 3D map is super cool, not just because it gives you that experience of having in-world hologram of a place. You can get a lot of 
little details out of just like looking at the models on the map without even having to go to a place. Without a doubt. I mean, it took me a minute to get my bearings, but after that, I was loving it, especially placing those waypoints. But one thing I'm still not 100% sure about are those world changes. Do you mind explaining that? Whenever the world changes on a weekly basis, the, the sort of like fundamental aspects of each of the strata stays similar and they each sort of have their own like atmospheric personality. The things that do change are the biome that's used by that strata, the islands that are on it, and sort of the distribution of islands. But also we repopulate the, the missions of the world. And in each new layout, we hide um, a different set of those collectible objects that you can sort of scan to get more backstory on the world. And then as sort of a, a, a global like modifier layer on top of that, each new cycle brings a new set of conditions that modify either how the Tempest arrange their squads or, you know, have an effect on how dense or common certain resources are or how they behave or, or certain weapons. So those sort of might um, push you in a different upgrade direction. I dig it. Keeps things fresh but familiar. Now you mentioned upgrade direction. Are you saying that I can't just unlock everything? There are not enough slots to equip every skill in the game. So you've got to make a build that is sort of like tailored to what you want to do with your character. When you go through a cycle and you complete Terminus, then on the next cycle, all of your equipped buds and your purchased blueprints get converted to growth. So basically, when you start this new world, sort of back from the ground floor, um, your character's power level is is fresh. Like you, you aren't ready to go straight to Terminus again. You'll get wiped out. And so we, given this new layout and these new conditions, we're basically saying, make a new character build using this expanded breadth of options and fight your way through the slightly harder world to try and get to Terminus again. I think I get it. The cycling world is definitely starting to make more sense. Now, would you say that that is the main form of replayability for players? There are sort of like three things going on there. You know, one is if you are interested in the objects and the stories that are in the index, you'll want to come back because there's more of that. If you manage to complete the highest strata uh, called Terminus, which is only available in that cycling world, then when you come back the next week, the Tempest have escalated. Like they have bolstered their forces and made everything a little bit denser and tougher. If you manage to go through at the highest escalation level, then the ending at the end of Terminus slightly changes. So there's like a story reason. And then finally, it is by going through a whole cycle that you earn this like growth currency. Ah, that's awesome. So there's always something changing to keep people interested. Now, real quick, do you have any tips for the new players? The the thing I would recommend to new players is when you first get started, really take the time to go off the beaten path. That's where you'll find a lot of stuff that helps you go stronger. So it, it's worth it. And we don't necessarily like, you know, put that stuff all right there in, on the on the main quests for you. Um, the other thing is make sure, you know, you visit your um, your workbench and your mod station to equip the upgrades you've got because it makes a pretty substantial difference. That was perfect. Mike, thanks for taking the time out of your day to chat with us. Now, before I leave you, where can players go to find out a little bit more about Stormlands? To find out more about Stormland, um, follow Insomniac on pretty much any social media platform that, that you want. Now, before we go, let's take a break from the show because it's time for everybody's favorite, Ask Frank. First up, Jeezy Video says, Frankie, it's been too long. Heard you moved, wondering where you hang your hat now. Well, Jeezy, buddy, I have moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, and now I work for First Contact Entertainment, making a game show and working as community manager for Firewall Zero Hour. So right now, I live in Santa Monica, and it's pretty awesome, buddy. Next up, Ian Frazier says, Frankie, loving a new show, but will you be streaming? Yes, Ian, we will be streaming. Now, I'm not 100% sure when the streaming will commence or the schedule of of when we will be streaming once it does start but you know what buddy i will definitely let everybody know 
And finally, sha na 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 zfat 15 says, Frankie, should I switch from PlayStation VR to Quest? Now, sha na 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 I don't really think it's a matter of switching. I think it's a matter of using them at different times. Now, you say you want it for custom songs on Beat Saber and a better tracking, which I can completely understand because having wireless VR is definitely amazing. But you are, like you said, you're going to miss out on those exclusives if you switch completely. So, in a perfect world, you're going to have a PlayStation. VR and you're going to have a quest and you're going to use them for two different reasons. Alright, now that's it for Ask Frank. If you would like your question answered on next week's show, all you have to do is leave the hashtag Ask Frank with the comment slash question in the comments and we'll do our best to pick you. Now, back to the show. So we reached the end of another episode. What did you think? Please let us know below and we'll do our best to answer your questions on next week's show. Now, before we leave, thank you all for coming through. You are amazing. Give yourselves a round of applause, thumbs up, and if you think we deserve it, then hey, you can throw us one as well. But more important than all of that is that if you want to stay up to date on any and everything in this gaming industry and you don't mind looking at this ugly mug, freaking subscribe. I mean, come on now. Nah. Now, on next week's episode, we sit down with the team behind Shadow Legend VR. We play the new free-to-play title, Circle of Sumo, and so much more on The Game Show.